art, education, and career. These are some of the most important things that we live for. The students who are here with us today are at the threshold of choosing the next stage in life. The best decision is a result of knowing yourself and knowing what works best for you. Here at DAV, we do exactly that. I welcome the distinguished panel of speakers, members of DAV management, principal ma'am, panelists, teachers, parents, and my dear most students to the ninth session of Career Guidance Webinar Series conducted twice a month. Please join us in invoking the power of God's blessing. Om Bhur Bhuvaswaha Tatsavitur Varenyam Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi Dhyo Yona Prachodaya Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. If you're someone who is fascinated by shapes, colors, angles, and structures, if you're someone who is a creative thinker, if you're someone who believes in making your visions a reality, if you're someone who finds fun in love learning, you are at the right place. As we already know, we are here to learn more about the scope, the career scopes of architecture. It is my pleasure to introduce today's panel of well-acclaimed and illustrious speakers, Sri Shubhati Guhaji, an eminent architect and urban planner, Sri Shaktivel Ramaswamiji, a prominent architect and the managing director of KRR Group of Companies, and finally, Sri Rupendra Kumarji, a DAV alumnus who is now pursuing final year of architecture at NIT Trichy. My humble pronouns to all three of you. It is with great honor that I introduce our first speaker, Sri Shubhati Guhaji. An architect and urban planner, Sri Shubhati Guhaji has an experience of designing across 20 countries and over 50 projects. He has worked alongside one of the biggest names in the field of architecture, Charles Correa, on numerous international projects and social redevelopment program projects. For the information of the attendees, Charles Correa was credited with the creation of modern architecture in the post-independent India. Sri Guhaji joined Zaha Hadid Architects in London to, in 2010. Zaha Hadid being a major figure known for her intensely futuristic architecture of the 20th and early 21st century. Sri Guhaji's expertise lies across all sectors, residential, commercial, infrastructure, housing, and retail. He is the founder of the award-winning studio Concept SD Limited, which works on avant-garde buildings and city planning. He is an honorary professor at XJTL University and has taught in UK, USA, China, and India. We are indeed honored to have you with us, sir. Kindly enlighten us with your thoughts. We are all yours. So. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for the kind introduction. And hello to everybody. Um, good evening there. And um, I'm going to share my screen and I will start the presentation. Um, please let me know if you can see it. Just one second. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Perfect. So today, um, I'm going to briefly talk about architecture. Um, uh, as you know, it's, it's a vast field. And at one point, how I started was uh, I was somewhere in your age, uh, uh, at a very young age. Um, looking at art and I liked art a lot and but the transition um, well, about the age of 13 I made from art towards architecture and thinking about it as a career so very similar to where you are now I was thinking about how to making this transition 
and and why because i mean this is one of my favorite paintings and and the transition happened because as beautiful as the painting was um it was confined in a canvas and uh, and i was exploring um could there be a bigger canvas i mean if if one could paint the world i thought and and that led me to um something on the left is one of my uh, buildings today um so so I'm going to briefly talk about what architecture I think it is. Um, for me, it's just an idea and, and everything starts with that idea. And, um, and you know, the, the universe is a very chaotic place. Um, you know, if you look out into the night skies or what we know at least of the universe, there's a lot of uh, action um, and, and clashes and, and big bangs and everything going on. So there's a lot of chaos. And then there is a lot of silence. And in between all the chaos and silence, there is a place where we are, where there's an order. And there's uh, higher levels of complexity, uh, complexity in nature, complexity in as we as living beings. And, and this gives us a, a sense, I would say, a sense of, um, so architecture for me gives a, tries, we should, think of it as making the planet richer than it is and giving a sense of stability and comfort in this vast major universe that we are part of. And at the same time, move human aspirations to another level uh, as we do it. And so that's um, my take on what I think is architecture. And this is how we started as, as apes, as chimpanzees, but we always aspired to, to building new forms, new shapes, uh, where we could live. And um, it's, it's not just humans, but animals and everybody do a very similar thing. So every bird's nest is different. Every shape of every cave is different. And, and we wanted as humans to move from what was early, uh, let's say, uh, shelter, which was temporary, to something of a bit of a more permanent order in architecture. So we want to, we have created this orders um, in different needs. For example, um, from the Stonehenge as, as a monument on the left to something like the reflecting the skies and the pyramids of the way they're managed to, to Colosseum for entertainment, for, uh, you know, for resting places, for, um, transportation for anything for houses and we have moved along across ages trying to do that and therefore it creates a presence in time for us so um, I left uh, high school and I went in search of the new architecture what it could be which took me to some of the offices on the left uh, which was Charles Korea, Zahadid and my own and I will take you a little bit through the journey of the work I've been part of. So um, as Gandhi once said that the best way to find yourself or find what you want to do in, let's say, the field of architecture is, would be to lose in the service of the others. And that is why building works. You know, you create it, but then it's no longer yours to, to inhabit, but you, know, you, you leave it for the world. So this was one of the first buildings I was doing with Charles Correa at the time. This was in Lisbon. This is a Cancer and Heart Research Institute. Uh, it's very cutting edge. Um, I worked on parts of the design. I helped with the modeling of the 3D. And this was built after I left the project. Um, it was built, I think, finished in 2014. And this is some of the views um, where you can look into the distance um, towards the ocean. It's very close to where Vasco da Gama I left the Bellum Tower to come towards India. So it's, it's, it's a very much journey into the unknown. Uh, and there are other projects like this, which is the Esmaili Center that I was part of. This is in Toronto. And, uh, and the roof uh, here was quite challenging. Uh, you can see the construction in, image on the left and, and the final product on the right. Um, then as I move towards, um, going into the practice in, in Zahadid in London, um, there was a lot of research, uh, um, funnily enough, on art, which I was also interested in. And, and, and we were doing these diagrams, these, 
um, this idea of paintings that led on to even larger scales, even like cities. And therefore, uh, when I joined the office and I was completing a project like this in Glasgow, which is a transport museum, um, and, and, and you know the ship is part of the museum, and it's it's a long continuous um, it's a soup of um, of of a of a ribbon. So um, and and then we were also starting to finish some of the projects in Gansau. This is the Opera House, um, and then uh, habitable bridges in this is Spain. Um, and also uh, train station entrances. This was in Austria, uh, Vienna, sorry. And, and, and then um, the Cincinnati uh, Art um, Center. So these are some of the projects that were going on. Simultaneously, this is a factory as well, a factory with uh, where the white collar and the blue collar workers, basically the people who work in the office and the people who manufacture the cars, they can see each other, it's not separate. So that was quite interesting and very, very different from what, how we saw factory people and office people as separate entities um, towards something like uh, a maxi museum where it was very highly appreciated, very built in concrete in Rome um, and the Olympic Aquatic Center in London uh, in 2012, uh, which was for the Olympics and this is the interiors uh, where the event was held. And today it's open to public and anybody can go there and swim, which is a good use of good, nice buildings created um, during a time of an event. And also things like this is an office building, which is a port authority in Antwerp, uh, like a jewel on top of a heritage building. Um, and also some small projects like uh, the the cent, uh, this, uh, serpentine gallery where the column and the light coming into the building integrates as one piece and and also projects like this which are housing which I was part of in Brisbane um, and um, airport which we recently finished in Beijing where the it's one of the largest airports in the world the Daxian airport and the internal light coming through the columns. It can be seen in a much larger scale here that light, people, and the surfaces all behave as one entity. So saying this, this was a glimpse of what buildings can be like in different types, shapes, sizes. Um, I will go through some projects on how we can build this. Um, one of the buildings I was part of was in uh, Milan, this is a tower. So there are three towers. We were only working on the tower on the left. Um, and the tower is designed with a twist. And the twist is based on two, uh, on a rotation, which is unequal. And as it goes up, uh, you will see a short video that how the curves of the growth of the tower, of the twist and the flow plates, you know, are assigned. So this is the vertical points, how we distribute it. And then we create this flow plates based on the radiuses. And then the whole tower generated out of that curve. So I will let this video run and talk through you briefly of the technical bits, like this is how the glass has been divided. And because every flow plate is different, uh, we try to optimize and make it feasible so that not everything is different, every glass is different, but as much as repetition we can have. And um, so this is all the number of glass points that we would have. And then we start having the flow plates, is the flow by four flow plates. And next comes the, uh, the components of the central columns, the concrete columns. Uh, and then we will have the columns which are inclined. So they are flow to flow inclined and they build the structure, outside structure, the center structure is obviously a core. And also we try to rationalize the chill beams, which is for the air conditioning that you have in the building. And then the ceilings of, of these every floor. And together we have 
the now we start building the facade. So there's a first layer of facade, which is the fire seal, which comes all the way to the top. And then the, it closed with, with the panels of concrete on these both ends. And then we have a second. Um, so this is the single layer glass in the middle. And lastly, you will see the outside skin, which is ventilated. So it reduces the impact of solar gains by having this double skin. So this is, um, let's see the building and if we'll go in a little bit closer, you can see the two skins and, and how the, the maintenance happen in between the two skins and the inside then is offices. So it's a good glimpse of how much detail, how much work goes into one of these buildings. And I thought then I will now show you that we took an axis, which was a metaphorical axis that was coming from the center of the city. And then it, you arrive in the, in the first uh, entrance and the axis is then picked up and it disappears. That is why we have the twist. So there you go. This is the axis that's twisting above and disappearing. And that's a photo of me in front of the building. But uh, moving on, there's a second building. Uh, which is a train station. So we had a vertical building and now we are dealing with a horizontal building where we have a train station, which is very narrow site and we wanted to give more space. So as you go up, it starts opening up. And, and this is a competition we won in Riyadh. And um, I worked on this project for a few years. And as you can see, these are some of the initial designs uh, of the entrances. So it's very tight. So you have two layers of trains coming in one that goes to the airport on the top and one that goes onto the metro. And then you enter on the ground level and you have an interchange level. And so, and some places when you don't have the train, it opens up into this large entrance. So here is some of the rendering we do of the project. And here is the reality is currently being finished on site. Similarly, there's a short one here. This is in Macau. This is also currently on site. It's a, it's a five-star hotel and then a four-star hotel and then a water park. And its whole concept is based on folding. So it, it is a, it's a commercial project, but at the same time, we try to do something that is very origami-like and a theme. And this is one of the construction pictures of its current state in Macau. Then moving on, I think I started, even after doing all these projects, I started to think about um, a journey, a journey for myself as well, to explore a bit further. So I, I opened the company and started building with one of these projects, this one being one of the first one where this lady is sitting, you know, a, for, in a place designed not for sitting. Uh, <laughs> So she's just enjoying the sun in Delhi on a winter day in front of a, 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 an artwork. And the building we designed is in the part of a temple complex. And you, know, you, you approach it and you don't see any door or windows like we are used to seeing in most temples. So it's very quiet. It gives a sense of quietness. So I like that. And it also deals with climate. So you, you have the air coming on the left, which is the cool air because of the shade. And it goes out through this chimney, which is also part of the architecture on the right. And it's a natural passive cooling system. Um, we designed it, we built it. This is the overall site. You can see the temple is in the center. The object that you see is on the right hand side with some more blue areas, which we built. And then the left one here is yet to be built. It's a project on site. It has taken 14 years now working on this. So sometimes we have to be very patient as architects and, and keep working, even though it, it might not, uh, you know, you might lose interest, but it's good to be keep the perseverance going. So next project I will show you quickly. Um, it's got a voiceover, so I'm going to be quiet. You can listen to it. It's in Agra. That we built. We look for constant exploration in nature, studying the continuity of its curves and the complexity of its surfaces. 
translating such forms into buildings is a challenge. High end computation can make it simpler to analyze and construct around the world. Forms with structures that are proud to reveal themselves. Forms that create new lived spaces. So that was the project. Uh, you saw how we developed it from inspiration from a leaf into a 3D model into technical, uh, uh, let's say computer generated models to finally building it on site. Uh, and, and these are some of the pictures. Again, you see it's a little bit different. It does not have fall ceiling. It does not have the windows like we know it. It, it is different in the way we, we see buildings as, as transparent, solid, and sometimes in the middle both. And we go into much further details. We go into branding and, and, and we go into showing that everything is integrated from cards. Um, we also participate in competitions. Um, we started participating. We won, this is in South Korea, where we won some prizes. It's a train station again. But the idea of this train station was to think of these hills in the background that you can see in South Korea. It's very hilly. And the idea of the geometry was replicating the hill in section, in plan, everywhere. So it's seamlessly connected to its nature. And these are some of the images of that project. This is a new project. It's in Pushkar. It's coming up this year. And um, this is one of the cottages um, which has a wind catcher. This is also a very passive cooling system where the air comes in and it cools the air and then you are in the, your resort and looking into the pool in the background. So this is the main building on the left that you see here. The cottage that you saw below around here with private pools. And then there's a banquet area in the middle. This is the restaurant, which is a little bit floating on water. It's gonna be on site very soon. Then we look into how art also translates. So an exploration in sketches and they kind of build something like this which is a house and sometimes we look into the night sky and, and where i started in the first few slides and we develop a kind of a vortex a canopy this was in hisar and participate in other competitions like the national war museum here and this one is in UK, uh, which is a community center, which is in the field of like an albatross wing spreading out like a bird. So um, this was most about the architecture I wanted to talk about, but I want to tell you that there is a bit more and beyond architecture as well that you can explore in this field. You can talk about some of the work that was going on in our in work at Zaha Hadid, which was art into the city seeing the city as a, as a model and, and how the densities can be distributed in the city as a parametric model, which then was realized in One North Master Plan in Singapore. And then also something like this, which is in um, Tallinn, which is a port master plan, which is of smaller scale. And then, also my personal interest in cities and, 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 and we participate in competitions where we, with space syntax and, and we participated against Herzog de Muron and we got the creative prize. This one is a 154 square kilometer master plan in Li Shui, China. And uh, you can see um, the overall master plan and how we prepare it. Um, it's beyond buildings. It has very much more complexity, transport, and we believe in the growth as polycenters and also how we can create icons in a city level. So thank you all for listening. And uh, this is me. Uh, if you have any questions, obviously we have an Instagram and website and all that, but I don't think it's the end. It's, 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 it's a continuous journey. So I think we should all continue towards it. And thank you everyone for listening to me. And, and that is, uh, all from my end. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you.
it was reassuring to know that we are all trying to find order in this way of this world of chaos and you've got us hooked with all the spell binding buildings and with your architects point of view with an insider's point of view thank you so much sir i'm sure it was it has benefited all the attendees uh, attendees it is your opportunity to type in your queries either in the chat box or in the q and a box these questions will be taken up after the session shall i move on to the next uh, Please do, ma'am. Please, yes, ma'am. Our next speaker, Shri Shakti Vail Ramaswamy, he is a well acclaimed architect and businessman. Shri Shakti Vailji completed his bachelor's degree in design from Sept University, master's in architecture from the Architectural Association School in London, and MBA from the Sloan School of Management, MIT, Boston. He has also studied at Stanford Graduate School of Business and is currently pursuing doctorate in business administration. Ram Swamiji is also the managing director of the KRR Group of Companies. It is my honor and privilege to welcome you, sir. The floor is all yours. Please, sir. So you're muted. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Radha Ma'am, for calling me. And uh, I was one of our students from high school. And it's really a pleasure to be a part of this session today. And uh, I've put together a little presentation uh, where I thought, uh, what will the 16-year-old me would like to see aspiring architects? So that's where I'm going to start this presentation. That's the note of this presentation. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to actually walk you through what my personal experience was in uh, uh, architecture. So uh, as a student and involved in research in academia as an adjunct professor in SEPT University and my professional work and how it helped me influence the business and how it has generally impacted me in my life. So that's what I'm gonna uh, walk you through today. So uh, to give you a little background about me, uh, so this is a picture from the 1800s. In this picture, my grandfather and my great grandfather are together. Actually, I come from a family of craftsmen who make chariots. Sorry, sorry, sorry. to interrupt. Screen is not shared, sir. Oh, is it? Oh, ah, yes. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, fine. So, Thank you, sir. Can you see now? Yeah. So, yeah, so that's what uh, I was just going through. So I'm going to uh, talk about different facets in my life and how my personal journey with architecture has been. So to give you a little bit of background, this picture is from the 1800s. And this picture has my grandfather and my great grandfather in it. I come from a family of craftsmen. Our family was involved in making chariots. So we were uh, well versed with uh, working with different materials, say metal, wood, and so on. And my father was lucky enough to go to college. And in the year 1976, this is a, a factory that he started in Ambatur Industrial Estate, very close to your school. These were the different projects he was doing uh, around that time. And these were a bunch of very hardworking people who were doing unbelievable things in the field of engineering. That's my father uh, uh, who, when he started the factory and it, it became a really international organization even at that time. From 1976, by the time of 1996, within a span of 20 years, he won the presidential award. So this is the kind of background I came from. And as a student, I was really interested in art. So I was very reluctant to even tell my parents that I liked drawings and paintings. And I used to go around Chennai painting buildings. I used to go to museums and observe sculptures. And uh, I, I was a part of my uh, you know, workshop. So I see a lot of relatives working with craft. So that influenced me a lot. And in general, I was really interested in photography as a young student. I used to walk around with my camera, click pictures and so on. So I was seeking where these interests could culminate and uh, where it will take me. That's when I joined SEPT University Ahmedabad. 
and uh, that that was a real turning point in my life when you know, things started changing and uh, all my creative urges started uh, to come out and make sense so i want to uh, talk about a little uh, project which i did in college i'm going all the way back because as students who are looking to uh, uh, to do architecture i think each journey is important as a student so this is a project where i had to design a, a showroom for music instruments so we had put together a concept board of how music influences uh, our mind and these are the drawings that were put up uh, at my final uh, jury presentation so i was visualizing the space to be a very fluid space with uh, a very uh, ethereal feeling when you walk into the space so these were the drawings that i did as a as a third year student in architecture these are some of the sections the concept of the store was that there will be walls which are fluid and which can move with music so that was the concept so uh, i had developed a complete full scale prototype of how this wall would move with music so this is where i saw there was a huge uh, information exchange my engineering background my craftsman background helped me to do this in school and this was a really well appreciated project at that time so there was a, a lot of influence from my background and these were the uh, images of the facades at that time and this is the image of the of the wall that could move the the whole wall was engineered and done with the frequency of the music the wall could actually dance along with the music that was the concept so then from there on i go to uh, doing my masters in london and uh, i did this course called emergent technologies and design and talking about research when i was towards the final years in my uh, undergrad education i got really interested in how nature influences architecture nature influences design and so i delved a lot into the subject so uh, as much as i was uh, trying to seek more meaning into how nature works how nature can adapt how nature is smart and how nature is efficient so all this led to furthering my research even further and i published two books one was called biomimicry and the other one called, was called fiber composite adaptive systems so to uh, touch upon a little bit of uh, uh, bionic smart adaptive systems which influenced my research so bio means life and which is there in every scale in this planet and nick is like so bionic is life like so that's where you take and also this is an anagram of biology and electronic so this is a, a rex man machine robot which is displayed in the london science museum so uh, talking more about bionics so th there is a space where we don't no more differentiate between what is human and what is electronic so it's it's really pushing the human efficiency to its boundaries so what you call as smart systems is self monitoring anal analysis reporting technology where this kind of a technology is embedded in many materials which act smart this is a a flight that is designed by nasa where the wings are very fluid and which can change shape according to different parameters from the environment so uh, my research led me more and more deeper it was taking me a little bit away from architecture but i kept on going with my queries so uh, looking at smartness it's about how a system is influenced by the environment and how its boundary changes that's what you call an adaptive system this is where this is what you observe in nature this process in nature is called pygmomorphogenesis you see when you touch a touch me not plant it closes to uh, touch or roots which wind around uh, its support and heliotropism in plants move towards the sunlight how flowers bloom with some for sunlight and how the venus fly trap traps a mosquito so th there's there's an amazing technology going on in nature so my research was taking me deeper in those areas this process was called morpho mechanical computation and if you look at a leaf it doesn't only hold the shape of leaf but it's also a part of the structure it's also part of the geometry it's also a part of the function and even the life of the leaf is embedded into one material 
So this query, like this is a cross section of a, of a stem packed with xylem and phloem cells, whereas it acts also as a structure, it also acts for transporting nutrients and water. So it's, it's an integrated, you cannot partition it in any way. So this kind of influenced uh, a lot of what I was doing in research. In nature, you observe multiple levels of hierarchy. There are, nature has very little material, but it, which has manifest in very many different forms. So um, as we look deeper into the nanoscales of nature, you see this amazing, amazing intelligence that is hidden there, which is called emergence, which we see in many uh, organizations, which is called self-organization, be it flocking of birds, be it school of fish, be it the organization on rock formations in nature, and be it a little Romanesque broccoli where you see this amazing pattern with uh, embedded mathematics in it, and or a river valley which gets flooded in a way uh, which is completely decipherable, or the thunderstorms and the lightning and you see amazing patterns which which has some kind of an order in it so uh, these are the things that influenced me and uh, uh, going further i'll just uh, take you quickly through how a zinc a single zygotic cell gets differentiated into multiple organisms so whether an organism is unicellular or multicellular the cells go through a series of gene expressions to reach a particular stage in development. This is a fruit fly, and this has got multiple uh, you know, uh, sections of genes. So just by reorganizing these genes, we see multiple forms in nature. We see this is an embryonic development of a fruit fly. So just like how words make sense, depending on where you put the THE, likewise, that's, that's what happens in nature. And that has led to different forms, limbs and heads and thorax and legs. And it's just how you multiply those that, that is important. Here's, here you see different limbs. And that has given, uh, given uh, that has led to like billions of variations in nature. Here you see a butterfly, it's got multiple patterns and just got multiple families, uh, multiple generations of evolution and so on. So just looking, taking you through some a set of images, you'll see how adaptation and evolution has happened over a period of time. If you see the DNA of humans, it's 90% similar to that of a cat, 80% similar to that of a cow, 75% to that of a mouse, and almost 50% to that of a banana. So it's just that how we are put together is different. And... Uh, these images are pretty self-explanatory. I will just take you to, through them. So from mushrooms to jellyfish to schools of fishes. You see how the birds develop their limbs and then the eyes and how the eyes are similar in different species. So here, uh, after this, so I, I, uh, I was looking at different formats in which how this could be copied. And I came across this amazing company which makes bionic systems. It's essentially a material handling system, which is uh, just got pneumatics in place. And based on how these three chambers vary, it could mimic the movement of elephants.
coming back to. So that had a lot of influence in what I was doing and uh, my practice. And now you see the bionic ingredients are very small. It, it involves sensors, actuators, control unit, energy, and material, all integrated into one material base. So uh, this is what I was going after and how I can develop intelligent adaptive systems. So I did a lot of experiments when I was in school in, in London in the Architectural Association. And we developed some prototypes of how we could control material, make it move with different parameters in the environment, be it temperature, pressure, and so on, humidity, and so on. So this research uh, got published in many uh, forums and it got exhibited in many forums. This is, uh, this is an exhibition that was held in New York where I presented my work on smart materials and adaptive systems. So this is a, another image of the exhibition. Uh, I was a part of the panel there uh, and there was a peer reviewed discussion. This was taken to the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. Uh, we participated in another uh, exhibition in Colorado where we presented how uh, such intelligent systems can influence. We did a lot of work on how dragonfly wings are uh, working and we took out that mechanism and looked, learned a lot about pneumatics. So this is a lot about uh, to what point I had come and now I had to put, put to use all of this. So these are some of the research thesis that guided in mathematics and how it influences uh, design and architectural spaces. The next uh, section is I go to uh, academia where I work as an adjunct professor in SEPT University for a while. And we had to put all these ideas to use. So there I conducted a workshop which lasted for about three months where we developed uh, some adaptive systems. So here are a bunch of students I was working with and uh, uh, it was from different uh, years, first year, second year, up to fifth year. And we put together a bunch of ideas. I roped in this company, Festo, who was headquartered in Ahmedabad, and uh, they did a lot of training for our students. And we were understanding how the mechanics and the pneumatics works in these smart systems. And we came up with this installation, uh, which is an intelligent installation, an art installation kind of thing, where these trees communicate with each other, which can monitor how many people walk through it. And based on that, they go happy or sad based on how many visitors they have. So this is another image of that art installation that we did. So this was called Talking Trees. I'll just show you a little video of what we did. That was one of the art installations that uh, I got the students to do. And uh, the next one is another interesting thing. It's called the unfurling fern. So uh, just like how a fern So just like how a fern grows, this is a stop motion image of uh, how a fern unravels itself in nature, how different structural things happen in nature, the osmotic pressure, how the nutrients move up the leaf in search of light and prosperity. And Sorry, I don't see the video. You don't see the video? So the video is not visible, sir. How oh, is it? Okay, so I think the, the image was pretty self-explanatory. So it's, uh, it's just uh, an image of how this fern gets, you know, opens up in nature. So this one, 
did you see the other video for with the trees no actually sir we are uh, like wondering if uh, the video is supposed to play we didn't see the video. oh just a minute i'll just stop the talking trees we just saw the structures sir yeah just a minute requesting uh, attendees to please post your questions in the q and a or chat box can you see it now yes sir yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. so this is how a fern unravels itself and this was what we were trying to imitate when we were doing the installation such beauty that uh, it's just a, a huge task to replicate something like this and we somehow managed to scratch the surface of it in the three months that we had with a bunch of 15 students i'll just show you uh, so this is the talking the talking freeze is uh, yeah, that. so this is the so that means you also didn't see the uh, festo video no, 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 sir. No, oh, sir. Okay, okay. Just a minute. So this is the talking trees. So that was the talking freeze, and this is the festo, uh, how it imitates an elephant trunk. So this was the installation uh, once we kind of cracked how to do that unfurling fern. And this was the team of students which we worked on both these installations. I will show you another uh, video of how that happened. So this was the... So yeah, uh, that was one of the projects I did with the students. And this is another project, which is called the Material Studio. So as I was telling you, uh, my influences in different materials with wood and metal and craftsmanship and the kind of smartness that I was trying to uh, introduce within the material, I thought I should uh, use a ground to get the students to work on smart materials. So we chose this material called lithopane which is uh, essentially uh, an acrylic plastic. We were doing a lot of CNC and CNC engraving in it. So this also got the students introduced to how engraving happens on lithopane. 
the, it's got a very ethereal quality about it. The light, the way light filters through it is amazing and you can make beautiful uh, textures with this material. So we were thinking of how do we encode data into this material. So if you see, this is a Rubik's cube, which is used by blind people. So we thought, why can't we embed this kind of a, a knowledge in data in, inside the material? So the project was then uh, driven towards uh, a brief of making something for the blind people. So uh, the brief that was given to the students was how an aquarium would be experienced by a blind person. So this is what you see with eyes. Like, can we replicate this with textures, with forms, something that the blind people would enjoy? So then we actually made it into a reality. Uh, this project went on for, again, uh, a span of four to five months. And we got sponsors to sponsor college students. And we made a team uh, with the Blind People's Association. And... Uh, I'll just show you a little video of how uh, the students constructed this. This was in the year 2014. So all the design was done and the students were building it uh, in a span of about 10 days. Just fast forward a little bit. So yeah, so, so once we did that, this was the end product of that. This is an aquarium for the blind people. And we, we managed to get that kind of an experience in spaces, in forms, in textures that one could experience. So these are some of the views of uh, the pavilion that we had put up. And we had, uh, here are some of the images This is the little structure. And uh, our Dean, Mr. Bimal Patel, who's designing the Rajpat in Delhi and uh, the Vishwanath Mandir, he was there, very much there and was inaugurated by the president of the Blind Association. It was a, it was a moment to cheer. We had an amazing exhibition of, to display how the students uh, made this happen. And all the little models that we had done before uh, this exhibition. So that's the students there. You can see me in the middle. And uh, it was a very, very happy moment to be there with the students and to give them the experience of building something on their own. And it was published countrywide and a lot of uh, uh, appreciation happened on the media. So uh, likewise, so this research in biomimicry took me to many uh, academic institutions to teach and to 
you know, uh, demonstrate what I had learned. So even in Anna University, we did another uh, installation called the reflexive wall for their uh, student festival. This is a uh, this is a wall which is a smart wall which can move and react to people's movement. So this is another bunch of students, and uh, this is another successful installation that we did here in Anna University in Dindi in Chennai. So that's about my academic work when I was uh, as a junk professor. And later I floated my own firm called Bio Inc, where uh, I was looking at eco-friendly materials and exploring paper as a material to construct. So this was another process which uh, culminated into an exhibition exhibit that I did in Delhi for the India design in 2013. And this we put together a whole system of how paper tubes can be connected together and made into a building. And this was uh, my own venture. So I had my team who, were, who I was working with. And this also got uh, widely published in uh, design magazines in the country. So now uh, after all of this work, I had to come back to my family business because my father had invested so much of time and energy in the business and he wanted somebody to take care of it. So it was a pretty different uh, move that I had to make, but I did uh, went back and get my uh, business degrees and I got back to the company and I kind of turned around the company, gave it a new image, uh, brought all the architectural knowledge I had, used it in infrastructure building for the company. Now the company, what was it was, what you saw in the 1976, that place is now this place. Uh, this factory is uh, spread about an area of six acres. We expanded uh, in, a, in a great manner. We did a lot of interesting engineering projects. So these are the projects which we are currently doing in the factory. Uh, we introduced avant-garde technology, robotic weldings, and we signed technology agreement with some of the uh, great researchers in the country, uh, CSIR, uh, National Aerospace Laboratories. And here, when I was doing all of this, there was a great influence of architecture that helped me support and uh, achieve all of this. So this is another equipment that we are doing. And when there was a requirement for oxygen, we floated a separate business called the KRR Oxygen, where we were supplying oxygen cylinders. Uh, we also delve into a lot of virtual reality in our projects. These are some of the large projects that we have installed in, in the country and abroad. Uh, we do a lot of work for uh, with overseas customers. So we have now customers all over the world, be it Chinese, Japanese, uh, Spanish, Italians. So uh, name it and we have it. Now we are exporting to more than 30 countries. And this year, last year, we won the uh, export award from the chief minister of Tamil Nadu. So now the team, what it was in the 1800s is now a team of 200 efficient staff and more than 300 uh, workers. And we are supporting almost a thousand people uh, in very close quarters. So I think uh, uh, my background in architecture helped me kind of, you know, um, understand how creativity can be injected into engineering. So it's a very uh, it's a very different approach and i really am glad that i went through this process so in general in life what i see as what got me into architecture what interested me appreciating uh, good work creativity so i i got the opportunity to travel around the world appreciate great things uh, click them into pictures appreciate beautiful architecture uh, visit many museums look at brilliant art, which I was always in awe about. And uh, I mean, I don't know, it's so ironic. Shubharti also showed this same painting that I'm, I'm having a picture next to. And I got to see the masterpieces, the Mondrians and the Matisse's and the Picassos, which is, a, which is an inspiration no matter what you do. And I got to see the, the world's best sculptures and uh, understand them and appreciate them in a way that I could have not if I had not studied architecture, if I had not stepped into architecture. And as I told you, I was interested in photography that took me to places. I was able to make some amazing pictures in different parts of the world. And uh, this has been displayed in many exhibitions um, uh, in many uh, places. And all of this has culminated into uh, what I do now. 
uh, though the work I do is very limited to my own residence, my own farmhouse, my own factory, but it gives me a lot of pleasure to kind of exploit what I have learned, my knowledge in architecture. So this is my house, uh, uh, which I uh, built last year. Uh, so I kind of, uh, you can see how life has influenced the architecture. So here is a set of steps, and this is the step set of steps full of life. That's my little family, my son and daughter. And this is again, uh, my dining room. And that's again, full of life. These are some spaces in, in my uh, house. So those are my parents who are enjoying good design. So this is another space and how it comes to life. So these are my friends. I'm sure other man would love this. These are my friends from school who visited me when they were here and different spaces. And, and this is a slide which I built inside my house, which was made in the factory. So uh, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a hot spot for my kids. So they love to play here. So this is one reason why I, I love being in the intersection of engineering and architecture. These are little expressions which I do in everyday life, which I would have not done if I had not been a student of architecture. Like even the little puja that we do, I make sure that it's precise, it's perfect. It's, you know, uh, in a way, it, it runs down to everything in life. Like even the little puja that you do, you make sure that everything is beautiful about it. I mean, I, I want to particularly touch upon all of these because it doesn't matter what, uh, what you do, what you learn, it's going to influence you, it's going to change you. So uh, just follow your heart, just do what you're doing, and uh, it'll definitely uh, be good at the end. So this is our uh, organic farm that we have, and uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm building this farmhouse over there where we are, I'm trying to integrate the architecture, the engineering, the craftsmanship. It's completely made of out of metal and terracotta and with local materials. So it's kind of a culmination of everything coming together over here. So it's made from local materials with craftsmen. And that also reflects how I handle my family. That's my son who loves Legos. And that's all the toys he makes with Legos. And he just won a national award on a poster making competition. My daughter has taken on painting, which I love seeing day after day. We just put together a little exhibition a couple of days back where she displayed all her paintings. And of course, I made great friends. That's Shubharti Guha with me. We went to the Stonehenge and uh, that's when we graduated together. Yeah, that's, that's all the fun that we had. And that's how all the dots connected. But thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for taking us along in your personal and academic journey. It is truly inspiring to see how art and passion uh, decides the course of someone's life. It was also interesting to see the pattern, the nature, the patterns of nature that we see around us all the time. And your work, uh, uh, an aquarium for the visually impaired people, it made us believe that we are indeed moving towards a more inclusive world. Thank you so much for that, sir. Thank you. Uh, PR attendees, let me remind you again, I'm sure you have a lot of questions. I know, I'm sure you want to know a lot more. So please keep typing in your questions either in the Q&A chat or in the chat box. Thank you. Ma'am, shall we move on to the final speaker? Sure, ma'am. Yes, sir. Next, let me introduce yet another outstanding alumnus that the AV has produced, Sri Rupendra Kumarji. Having done his schooling from DAV Boy Senior Secondary School, Mother Pair, in 2017, he is currently pursuing his final year of Bachelor uh, Architecture degree at NIT Trichy. He has already showcased his competence in designing both within the campus and outside. With his passion and skill set, I'm sure, we are sure that he will reach greater heights. Sri Rupedra Kumarji, please share your thoughts about taking up architecture as a course. We have a question already. So please tell us about the various courses, the admission uh, procedure uh, and the colleges, 
Yes, sir. It's all yours, sir. Thank you. Good evening to one and all present here. Thank you, Ms. Shilpa, ma'am. And thank you for the wonderful opportunity, Ms. Radha, ma'am. So with that being said, and thank you for the panelists, Mr. Shubhati ji and Shaktivel ji for the presentation of architecture as a career and the various avenues that we can take forward as a student and myself as undergraduate currently. So let's move on to seeing architecture as a course. To give a small, a small introduction, So many of, uh, I believe currently the uh, artists are mostly students and with the, with the current question of what to choose after 10, we'll begin our journey of this presentation. So what seem to choose after 10 standard? The minimum standards as per the requirement of COA is that the eligible candidate to appear for architectural entrance examinations should be particularly of a science stream student currently with maths, physics and chemistry as subjects and minimum of 50 percentage aggregate in scoring. Earlier, up to 2015, if I'm right, there was a there was allowance for commerce and humanities students to appear for giving architecture examinations. But this was changed with the 2018 amendment, where the council sorted to make the course technically sound. And if if not for a high school degree, high school program, it is also fine to pursue a diploma with three years validity and uh, mathematics as a compulsory subject. Similarly, 50 marks is compulsory. In my journey as a student from 10th standard, I had the op option to choose between computer science, biology, and engineering graphics being one of uh, different programs that is offered in DAV group of schools that no, is not found in many other schools. So I chose engineering graphics as one of my subjects along with the science stream group as it helped me to gain the perceptive knowledge that is very much necessary is a first year or a beginner of architecture course. The subject dealt with the knowledge of perception, the understanding of shapes, forms, and all other diagrammatic problem solutions that are very much needed for one's understanding. Moving further, I'll just give you a brief introduction about the entrance exams that are available for appearing to pursue a career in architecture. The very well-known entrance exam is NATA, which is actually conducted by the House of Architecture. And other examination patterns follow the guidelines as described by Council of Architecture and are similar to the question paper pattern of NATA. So the NATA admissions are required for colleges all over India, except for the IATs, NITs, and SPAs. For NITs and SPA, SPAs, which are, are, are the other private lines, sorry, public lines that are available for studying, the examination that one has to kind of take is JE means paper two. While there is a paper one for engineering, the paper two focuses on Bachelor of Architecture and Bachelor of Planning courses. And for admissions into IITs, one has to clear, one has to take up an examination called Architecture Aptitude Test. That is the for last stage of examination once one has cleared JE advanced. And for students of NRI background, there is a special quota called DASA that is especially for admission into NITs and SPA, SPAs across the country. Previously, the DASA quota was based on SAT examination scores, but now it has been ma mandatorily required to have a JE-based scoring to appear for this DASA quota allocation. And apart from all these examinations, several private colleges have their own entrance exams, such as VAT for VA JE and SRM for SRM JE. I'll give you a brief of the pattern in the upcoming slides. So coming to the NAT exam pattern, the assessment categories will be on diagrammatic reasoning, numerical reasoning, verbal reasoning, inductive reasoning, situational judgment, logical reasoning, and abstract reasoning. While diagrammatic reasoning and numerical reasoning are separate sections, the other sections combinedly are coming under logical aptitude tests. So the number of questions that will be asked in the NATA question paper will be of 125 questions and the marks total will be of 200 marks with a pass percentage of 80 marks minimum to be eligible to appear for counseling in various other architecture colleges. 
So the type of questions will be from multiple reasoning questions to multiple selection questions to preferential choice questions and numerical answering questions. The language is basically in English medium and a marking scheme will be from one, two or three marks. There's no negative marking in NATA exam paper. And with that being said, the next slide will talk about JE mains paper to pattern. So this examination is taken for admissions into in all NITs that provide architecture as a course, as well as the SPAs that are primarily dedicated for architecture and planning studies. So the number of questions in this category is uh, of 82 that subdivided into mathematics, aptitude and drawing. The assessment categories are quite similar to that of NATA. And the overall questions has been upgraded to 400 marks, while when I was writing it was only for 360 marks. And during the COVID scenario, there was a dropout of a drawing as a question, but aptitude and mathematics were there. But with the current planning scenario, the National Testing Agency has said that drawing will be included in this year's paper as well. So math and aptitude will be math will be similar to what we find in JMS paper one, and it it covers the subjects within the 11th and 12th mathematics portions. And the aptitude questions will again test our logical skills and as well as our architectural knowledge with various questions based on both categories. And the drawing questions will be based on our understanding of pers perspective drawing, our understanding of how forms combine to create a new form and so on and so forth. The languages for this type of examination is available in English and Hindi options, whereas for especially from candidates from Gujarat, the language is Gujarati as well. And the marking scheme is a uh, for every correct responses, there will be four marks awarded, whereas for every incorrect responses, one mark will be detected. One, one understanding that one should have is that the marks detected will be from the marks that is scored and not from the marks that is not being scored. For instance, if you are scoring the four marks in, in one of the questions and, and the other question is incorrect, the minus one will be reflected from the previously earned four marks. So one has to attempt this question paper with a with careful understanding and very precise understanding of the subject. And no marks will be awarded for unaffected questions. Moving further is the JE Advanced Architecture Aptitude Test. For one, as if one is interested to study architecture in the prestigious IATs that offer architecture with being that said, are Karakpur, Roorkee, and currently BHU Varnasi has also started a program on architecture. So for getting admission into the IITs for architecture, one has to clear the JEMS paper one that is specifically for engineering with the with the qualification marks being enough. Proceeding further, one has to attempt both the JE advanced papers one and two with the getting a proper cutoff score. With and ap apart from once the JE advanced results are announced, uh, the architecture attitude test portal will be open. So one has to enroll themselves for the architecture aptitude test and it will be conducted across the seven zonal IITs, IIT Madras from IIT Madras to IIT Bombay and Delhi and so forth. The architecture aptitude test pattern is not structured and it varies from year to year. But it tests especially on the drawing skills with the logical and mathematical skills being previously tested in other JE papers. So some of the categories of drawing assessment in this type of examination is of freehand drawing, Geometrical drawing, three dimensional perception, imaginal aesthetic sensitivity, and architectural awareness. So, th these are primarily our uh, op examination options within India. And for abroad, the examinations as such are not that, but one has to attend SAT, which is for university based colleges. And for UK and other options, it's basically important for us to qualify the language requirements. For UK, it is IELTS and for other countries like Germany, one has to have a particular understanding of German language to a particular level of at least K2 or P1. And this is li list of uh, top colleges offering architecture as a degree in India. This list is based on NIS ranking and it is subjected to change with the college performance varying from each and every year. And I, I would also like to add this point that all the colleges that are verified by COA are actually good and well enough to pursue an artist as a course and this ranking alone is not the criteria for judgment or choosing a college. So I would request each and every candidate whether a parent or the student present here to visit the COA government website and refer the 
list of colleges that have been verified by the coa and to get a proper understanding and to do a self research which is always essential and is good for a own understanding so some of the colleges that are being currently listed as good performing in the nis ranking which is being a reliable government backed source are iits that is karakpur roorkee and banaras university in varanasi then the sps that are in delhi bhopal jaywada nits being tiruchirappalli calicut hamirpur nagpur bhopal roorkee raipur jaipur and patna sir tamnava which is one of the foremost and well sought institutions in the country and anna university which is well known for us uh, being in chennai and its affiliated colleges as well sir jj college of architecture is one of the oldest institutions in india and one of the first institutions to set up in india and it has produced a, a large number of ar- indian based architects and other colleges being jamia millia islamia in delhi manipal university jagrati college in madurai bms college in bangalore college of engineering trivandrum and pits branchy and a few list of colleges that are opting bachelor of architecture in abroad are mit in united states welch in netherlands ucl in united kingdom eth zurich in switzerland harvard university in united states university of california in united states politecnico di milano in italy manchester school of architecture in united kingdom university of cambridge in united kingdom and epfl switzerland so these are based on the qs rankings that is uh, one of the well known sources but there are several other colleges as well so i will just come to the structure of the course and share my experience as well so the structure of course is based as we know it is for five is for a five year period of timeline and the first year is basically the foundation so what in this first year what happens is the uh, concepts of design and basic ar- architectural fundamentals are laid and it has been it, it it is somewhat similar to what we can see in other similar design courses where the design fundamentals are in, inculcated into the individual's mind so there is a misunderstanding that architecture is only art it is much beyond and it is also within and in this first year there is uh, there is a noted number of people to con- getting confused with this and trying to uh, uh, drop out then to drop out as of this confusion but architecture as a course begins once after we cross this stage into the second year so the second year is when we are introduced into the concept of architecture from structure to materials and so on and it is in third year we we transform our knowledge further and deep into the technical aspects of services more for the details of tech uh, structures and in this period of third year we get an option to learn about other allied fields of design as well as like interior design uh, graphic design computational design and so on so with all the technical knowledge that has been gathered so far the fourth year is one of the very most most known year in architecture is being the practical training during this practical training period which is for, in some colleges for one year period or in some other colleges for the six period, six months period timeline one is allowed to go and get an internship and work in a, in a architectural practice a studio or a firm across india as well as abroad so this is the period when the, uh, the student gets to interact with architects and get to know the reality of architecture as a field and the last year is the final year where all the practical and the technical knowledge is being put into test in the form of theses where one has to come up with his or her own project and that showcases their understanding of their knowledge so that has been gained throughout the years also within this five, five years there are several avenues of competitions workshops research options and so on for the students to explore and gain knowledge clubs and other activities are also advised to be ex- a part of extra curriculars that one can take up and l- learn further and get a good knowledge for example if one is interested in computer science based coding or other similar avenues and want to pursue a career in architecture as well there are several options to do the same and so is this uh, example of what we saw in biomimicry and as suppose the most of the learning happens within a space called studios while technically called most of the colleges have only classrooms and laboratories architecture schools have a studio studio classroom and laboratories and so on so the studio is where most of the design knowledge is being taught and experimented and evolved 
and the story has been set up on a similar lines of what, what one will be facing in practical life while working in a firm so what happens is every year every year or every semester one or one is introduced to a design problem where one has to come up with a solution to the problem and one of the beauty of this subject as whole well is that there is no one particular solution as as a exact so, correct solution each and every individual is capable of generating more more than one or two solutions at for a given problem so this is being evolved in this period of uh, design courses and this is what will uh, reflect in our practice as well and there is a saying that architects are called master of all trades that well suits within the, the from learning to practical stage coming to the student body organizations architecture as a community has been well established and well connected right from the student student ages while the council of architecture focuses on the practical practice and professional part there are student organizations like national association of students of architecture ethos and the student member body of indian institute of architects that focus on in involving students and raising their voices and their problems and concerns as well as in educating them with workshop conventions several other lecture programs competitions and so on and so forth so this is to create a net, uh, networking solution for the students and help they, this helps them to connect with several other students from any part of the nation and even internationally and uh, as said earlier while researches and internships are one of the very well known aspects in all fields art teaching competitions as well play an important role in helping us to exploit our, and explore our knowledge and much further so every year there are several competitions that happen for architects as such even from government side and private side so governments themselves come up with several other project proposals to construct and design and give a solution for the existing problems that prevail within the country and even internationally so these are uh, these are one of the golden opportunities for the students to learn and learn and explore more into the field of architecture so with that being said let us uh, assume that we are having a bia degree in our hand now and let us see what are the post completion options so generally the options that people pursue are either masters or going for a practice whereas architecture also provides a flexibility for us to change our careers within some other fields of design or even more so that flexibility is present within this course and if you are going for a masters the other avenues that are opening for us are going into research and teaching professions uh, and while coming to practice several architects uh, architecture undergraduates choose the option to either go for immediately masters or to work for a period of 2 or 3 years of to gain experience and then pursue masters and come back to practice so this way they are able to experiment their gain knowledge in practical situations as an architect and are able to further develop themselves so once when we are coming to a practice the options are either we can be self employed right at the beginning itself of our architecture career because architecture provides the uh, assisted option and as as architects our curriculum is such that it inculcates the entrepreneurship thoughts within us right from our beginning of our course so we can self we can, we can start as a self employed architect as well as work for an architect or develop companies so while practicing the options that we have are as architects are to work primarily as an architect or to be a designer on several avenues of designing fields or to act as a project manager who is known for coordinating between building projects to go into the field of journalism as an architectural journalist or to start as an entrepreneur or a urban planner or a regional planner who works well within the government and in policy making so these are some of the masters option that are available in architecture currently in india and one of the ways to achieve it is to write gate exams and ced exams for design based courses and gate for other courses so the options being said are mrk in general that focuses on general application of architecture then mrk in interior design mrk in landscape design mrk in urban design mrk in computational design that focus on computational aspects of architecture mrk in sustainability sustainability is being one of the very much sought options in our country right now to have a sustainable environment and sustainable future as well 
mr can artificial conservation which, which is a study that is known to help us to preserve the artificial monuments and other spaces that are artificially renowned mr can real estate focus in real estate developments and uh, artificial point of view and housing mr can housing is a, is a provision of study that helps in uh, government bodies to provide come up with housing solutions for the needy m plan in m planning and urban planning or town and rural planning focus on the top, planning aspects with transportation also being one of the fields where the transportation could be related to metro planning or more other government based transportation projects so when it comes to management the options are building engineering and, man and construction management which is provided by the nic mar institute of india that is also a public body especially for project management related courses and as an architect we can pursue a career in design so the fields within design are into product designing ux and ui designing that deals with the interface of several other apps and websites that we see today and use m m design graphic design m design game digital game design so currently there has been a re boom on the topic of metaverse and so on so and it has been well discussed and debated about architects role in these aspects as well so it is an upcoming field for us to explore and explore and much into the avenues and these are some of the unique master's option that are available in abroad which are related to architectural history urban regeneration mbn design strategy mtech in building energy and performance mc in geomatics which focus on the geomatical and geographical resources of a site that could be viably used for designing the spaces MA in special performance and design, MA in art history and criticism, MSc in construction management and law, MSc in biodigital architecture, MSc in design theory and pedagogy, MSc in building information management, which is a well sought field in within architecture and construction industry, MSc in digital architecture and robotic construction, MSc in naval architecture and ocean engineering, MSc in artificial acoustics, and MSc in artificial writing. Also. Management of uh, public class affairs is one of the fields that architects tend to go to get into the fields of pub, pub, public policy making. That works that, that where the one person works with the government in policy making and related affairs. So the well sought destinations for masters in abroad are being said UK, United States of America, Germany, Netherlands, Singapore, and Canada. And the scholarships and the grants that are available for pursuing architecture as a career, as a course as well. Within India, our, one of the foremost associations are National Scholarship Portal that has been sponsored by the government of India. And this scholarship portal has listed various other scholarship programs, not only for architecture, but for every other degree for each and every individual. So scholarship, that's generally a misconception that scholarships are for meritorious students, but it is for uh, everyone. For an instance, if there is a girl child who is the first graduate from a family. The, there are several scholarship schemes for the girl child to promote the girl child education in India. So I would request the attendees to have a thorough research on the scholarship part as well while applying for colleges to get, get, gather much more knowledge on this aspects. For persons interested to study architecture abroad, there are scholarship schemes called as Sanskriti Gedi Scholarship, which was focused on architecture as well studies. Swami Dayanand Educational Fund, that is for USA and for studying in USA. DAAD is for Germany, that provides scholarship for 25 students each year to study Germany for full coverage of their course and stay. And Erasmus program is for studying in European Union and Schengen region. Kate Neil Kenley Memorial Fund is for uh, specifically for IIT course. Royal Institute of British Architects. Also, it's a well-known association in, Brit in Britain for functioning and regulating the architecture as a course. And they have come up with the Ren Insurance Association Scholarship for pursuing studies in the UK. And there are several college sponsored scholarships, grants, and financial aids in each and every public and private colleges abroad as well as in India. So this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Rupinjiji, for that detailed input. Much appreciated. Thank you for also talking about the scholarships and grants, which is sure to benefit mo most of us. 
Next, let us move on to the second part of the session where we take up all the queries, all the questions you have, all the attendees have posted. Request Rupendra ji, uh, stop sharing your screen. screen. Stop, stop sharing. It's looking for the option. So it's on the top, sir. You have the green color. I can stop it, sir. Want me to do that? Yeah, can you please do it? Sorry for this. No problem. Ma'am, shall we move on to the question? Yeah. Let's, let's go on to the Q&A. We have some question and answers in the uh, chat box as well as in the Q&A section. Yes, some of the questions are already answered with all the presentations. I think uh, uh, one of the questions was about the admission procedure to IITs and NITs. I think that is already answered with, uh, about the entrance exams. And then uh, what are the budgets for these buildings? Buildings. I think this question is uh, directed to Sri Shobhar PG. Uh, <laughs> um, it varies. It varies depending on the scale, on the country we are building in, um, and uh, also the context and the engineering of the buildings. So um, in one of the buildings, I showed you how we made, even though the building was twisting and curving, but we managed to do a lot of typical glass modules, which economizes uh, the building. So um, it is a view, huge variation. So it's difficult to answer what the budget is. Um, and even in India, uh, when, we, when I do some work there, uh, we have a lot of variation. Um, so for example, uh, a building uh, can go from uh, 2,500 rupees a square foot uh, to um, if you're doing a five-star hotel, there is no end to that limit. It can go to 10,000 rupees a square foot or even 15,000. So it all depends on the client uh, and what you want to do. And um, so it's a lot, but I... Um, just to um, give you my take, uh, usually um, when you are designing something as an architect, you don't want to, uh, my personal feeling is that you don't want to think about the budget too much. Uh, you want to do what is right. You know, as I say, you know, you have to do what is right and then you will figure out a way to make it work. And, and that is the role of the architect, to make it work, to fit the brief, to fit the client's need. Uh, and also sometimes the client doesn't know what he needs. So it's also your job to, to tell him that this might be better, this might be, you know, maybe you need to invest a little bit more, maybe you need to phase it out. So all that is, is also part of your um, task. So I'm not, I can't give a concrete answer, but this is the best I can, I can give. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next question we have is, what are the colleges you would recommend outside India? I think any of the speakers. I think Ms. Ropinder has already covered the whole thing, uh, Shilpa. He has covered about the various universities and the grants. Colleges and outside India. Actually, I have something to say over here. Please, uh, sir. Uh, yes, see, sir. What, what happened was, uh, I did my schooling in TI school in Ambatur. <clears throat> And uh, it was actually my principal, Mr. Venkata Krishnan, who kind of supported me when I want to do architecture. I was very scared to even to go and tell my dad that I want to uh, enroll myself in architecture. And at that time, uh, the principal called my dad and he said, this child, he's really interested in art. He wants to do architecture. So I joined, uh, I joined a, a college, a private uh, uh, college in Chennai. Actually, I finished three semesters uh, here, uh, it is located, the college is located in Kartangulatur. At that time, I don't know, uh, the, the course was not very well defined over there. And of course, I was stopping in all the subjects. I was very happy. But if I was stopping, I, I realized maybe this is not the best place to do it. It can't be so easy. You know, it has to be tougher than this. So uh, after a year and a half, I... Uh, kind of uh, seeked the best places to do. And then I applied to SEPT University 
I did my entrance exam. Actually, I also traveled to Delhi. I wrote my entrance exam in SPA Delhi. And after about writing exams to uh, three to four different places, then I got placed in the School of Architecture in uh, SEP. But today, Mr. Rupendra, who is who has introduced everything to you, he should be really hats off to you, Rupendra, because uh, uh, he has put it put the complete panel out there for you. See, he has completely covered what are the colleges in India, what exams you should write. If you were there, I would have saved one and a half years of my life. Thank when you. I was sixteen. Thank <laughs> yeah. So, that shows your maturity, sir, to discontinue after one and a half years and then go. That shows that you're a goal getter, sir. Thank True, you truly said. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So I think you guys uh, have excellent information in front of you. And of course, uh, the internet was not so uh, good at, the, at our times in 1999. So uh, please be well informed where you apply because there are very, to be very honest, um, there are very few institutes in India which you can get in and shine in the feet. There are very few, very limited probably uh, you can count with your fingers. And the, the ones who really want to uh, do good in architecture, try to get into those institutes. I don't want to name them, but uh, yeah, there. Shubhati, you want to name a few? I, I would also like to say a little bit uh, away from institutes. Um, some of the famous architects, uh, Lee Corbusier, um, Tadao Ondo, uh, they never went to university. Um, they, but they learned. I think it's very important uh, that everybody um, should have the attitude that uh, you want to learn constantly, no matter if you have graduated from the university or you're going into one or you have uh, finished a PhD. Uh, what made them great architects was they, 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 you know, for Tadao Ondo, which I mentioned, um, yeah, I'll just tell us, if I may take a minute to talk about his work. He, he did not go to university. He went to a library to study books of Corbusier and concrete and, 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 and went there every day learning uh, in the library because he couldn't buy the book and became, and was one of the masters of concrete on today. So um, I think it's universities are great. I mean, I went to universities. I went to SPA. I went to the AA where I met Shaktivel. Um, so they can also be great. Uh, but a lot of the people who studied with me uh, do not practice architecture anymore at all. Um, and, and they have changed careers. So when you select a career, uh, make sure you really want it. Um, and even if you make it to the great universities, it's great. If you don't make it, uh, don't stop, you know, don't, don't stop if you are interested in it, just keep going and you'll find some way to go through because I don't expect everybody listening today will get into the top university tomorrow. So I think you, there is, if you like it, if you like architecture, wherever, whatever university you get in, yeah, just continue your work. And if you keep learning, you will shine wherever you go. Well said, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I, I would like to also add a little story over here. There was this architect uh, called Jeffrey Bawa from uh, Sri Lanka. He was this, uh, uh, he was a lawyer and uh, he was great at his practice. He has this amazing, uh, successful practice in Sri Lanka. He was about 42 when he decided to do architecture. And uh, he just closes down his practice. He goes to London the same university where myself and Shubharti went. He studies architecture at the age of 42, comes back to Sri Lanka, and then continues to practice architecture. And uh, till the end of his life, he, he is one of the Pitska winners. There are these amazing buildings built by him in Sri Lanka all over. It's completely influenced the architecture of Sri Lanka. So even such things happen. So your life can completely turn midway, who knows. Right, right, right. Uh, is mathematics required to become an architect? Is one of the questions that I've been posed. Uh, I would love, I would love to answer that question. <clears throat> Honestly speaking, I was a very average student in uh, school. In, I didn't understand 
what all this differentiation and integration what is this you know how is it going to apply to life but i understood math when after joining the school of architecture after understanding what is this romanesque broccoli what is this geometry that is there in it i need to crack it from that perspective i learned uh, math but that's that's the very interesting perspective yes there is a lot in common between architecture and math but not in the traditional way we know it we should be able to make amazing connections which are uh, very important surprisingly after finishing architecture i guided a masters thesis in mathematics of how it's related to design but that, that's that's what uh, you need to really look at the subject in a different way but it's not technically it's not a very important uh, point needed required for architecture or uh, subhashbharti can add to it i think uh, rupender already said it, that an architect is not a scientist in a way he knows something about everything so yes you need to know a little bit about mathematics you need to know a little bit about structure so you need to know a little bit you can't ignore uh, because as you can see in all his entrance exams that he has listed and the kind of questions it's it's a lot to do with aptitude and reasoning and it was the same in my time and yes now it's very you know there's a lot of entrances and everything uh, but uh, the the principle is still the same that there's a lot of aptitude and aptitude is i think very critical in architecture so an aptitude involves everything it's like a test of general knowledge but a practical test of general knowledge that you can have visually and uh, mentally so i think um, and maths maybe uh, is involved in a certain way in in it so it's not you have to be a great mathematician but you need to know a little bit about it i would like to add something on this aspect as well so mathematics as both of them said is applied in a way design thought and it has been reflected in their works also for example shubhati goha sir he showed us the configuration of how the plates floor plates are changed to give up that structure in milan so that's where we can see the application of how mathematics is changing into design and as well in shaktivel raman sami sir's presentation he showed us that moving wall facade system right so that also involves certain mathematical calculations that makes us to visualize how that thing turns out to be in practical life so the technical aspect of mathematics though it's not that much into the subject there is a practical understanding of this mathematics that has been applied everywhere that i would like to add on this on this discussion thank you very much i think the bottom line is everyone should know a little bit of everything yeah. especially for the aspiring architects right yes thank you sir um i think we can take a one more question Sure, ma'am. There's, I think, one more left there. What are the differences between a career in architecture, design, and civil engineering? Are they all different? I think this is addressed to Subhati. So. Oh, it's to me. Okay, um, it's a tough question, um, but I'll try and answer it a bit uh, more simpler. i know um, there is a categorization of civil engineering there's a categorization of uh, interior design or furniture design and there's a categorization of architecture but i think the goal for all of them is the same i mean that's how i started the lecture the goal is to is to create something and i think no matter which of these aspects you go for me the goal doesn't change so you you may be contributing in a different level as an engineer uh and uh, you want to find the like mindedness of the engineers together with the designer together with the architect so it's a very hard question because all the separate separations created are our own uh, in the society but i think as a goal it's the same so if you join civil engineering you you will land up on project sites uh uh not as a designer but you can influence uh, a better design by your involvement and your expertise so i think uh, how to answer this i i don't know how to answer this very straightforward i mean i'm always thinking about the holistic 
um, uh, aspect of of buildings and and designs. So in in my head, yeah. uh, everything goes to the same direction. <laughs> I mean, Shubharti is obviously always very poetic in the way he talks, but uh, I would like to say something over here. See, uh, if you want to approach uh, design from the creative perspective, then you should choose design or architecture. If you want to choose, uh, if you want to approach it from the technical aspect of it, then you should uh, do it come from the uh, civil engineering aspect of it. But uh, uh, this exposure of uh, knowing a little bit of everything and being a master of everything, that, that could happen only through probably design and architecture. So to put it simply. Thank you for that, sir. Ma'am, I think we have taken up all the questions. Yes, ma'am. How uh, there's one question which is very simple. It says, "How uh, is art connected to architecture?" I think uh, all the three panelists have already contributed to that. Uh, if we are good with all questions, any more questions that you have spotted in the chat box, ma'am, or in the Q and A, which is left no, unanswered? Repeat it. Chat box. Repeat same question. Repeat, repeat it. Repeat. It. Right, ma'am. Big thanks to everyone who asked the questions and to the speakers for taking out the time to answer them. Now that we have reached the end of the session, may I request Principal Mrs. Radha Subramaniam, ma'am, to kindly propose a word of thanks. Thank you. Namaste, Shilpa, ma'am. Thank you all. Gratitude makes sense of our past, brings sense for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. I express my heartfelt gratitude to Shri Shubharti ji for having taken time out of his busy schedule to motivate students. Sir, the third law of thermodynamics states, entropy of the universe is ever increasing. Entropy is disorderliness. But then your presentation today, the buildings, the astounding opera house, the train station, the art center seems to challenge the third law of thermodynamics. Thank you very much, sir, for your presentation and the talk and your journey of your discovery from an artist to an architect. Thank you very much, sir. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to Sri Shakti Velji. Sir, uh, I'm sure our students are enthralled their family's journey from 1800 to now as craftsmanship. And also the concept of moving walls moving to the sound of music is intriguing indeed. And the aquarium for the visually challenged sir is very heartwarming. Thank you very much for your presentation. Last but not the least, I would like to thank Sri Rupendra ji for your very precise inputs about the various examinations, the components of the assessments students need to keep in mind. Students who are uh, interested in pursuing architecture, architecture as a career. Thank you very much, sir. Children, attendees, frankly speaking, there is an artist, an architect lurking in every heart. The quintessential man is a great worshipper of beauty and his aesthetic sense continues to produce greatest wonders. Bhavan Nirman Shilp began, Vastu Kala ki hai pehchan, Sabhi Kalaon ki hai ye janani, Panch Tatuon ko lekar hai ye bani. Hence, Del Reaper, explore the artist and the architect in you and convert your pa passion into your profession like these gentlemen have done. Wishing you all the very best in all your endeavors. Thank you one and all. Before, the curtains come down on today's webinar. I would like to announce that the next webinar scheduled for 5th of March is about career options in the field of journalism. Thank you one and all. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Uh, Balakrishna Doshi, the first, yes, uh, Rupendra Sorry to interrupt. I actually have some documents to be shared in this group that regards about the entrance exam and the colleges. Can I just share it in the chat box? Yes, sir. Uh, you can put it in the chat box. Uh, Shri Ashwin ji will uh, put it in the website. That'd be sure. great, sir. Thank you. Yes, ma'am, I'll do it. Yes, ma'am. Shilpa, ma'am, you were saying something? 
Dr. Balakrishna Doshi, the first Indian to win the Pritzker Prize, which is known as the Nobel Prize for Architecture, once said, a marriage between personal creative urge and fulfilling unspoken dreams of clients is called architecture. With that, I sign off only to meet again for yet another incredible session on 5th March. Till then, let's strive to widen our horizons and live life to the fullest. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste all. Thank you very much. Thank